are, are start like do you know who's starting right now, or do you have an idea of how many people you would pencil in as starters right now? Well, you know, it's too early. I'm, I, you know, we have an idea, but I don't want to make that public. Game. It's one of those things where let's let have a, at least a couple of days of competition, <laughs> you know, before we start penciling in rotations and all that. But uh, we're gonna go through camp, and we'll have we'll play with some different lineups to get some experience with guys playing with each other and understand spacing in certain situations and different positions. So we're not gonna, uh, you know, go into that right now. But I I think it's gonna be pretty clear here in the, in the next week or so. Because we need to start getting reps and, and, and repetitions together, you know, that starting in the second year. So we'll, we'll get into that pretty quickly, but let's give us a couple of days. You, you talked yesterday, you said that you, I think you said man crush was the term you used for Kelly Hillman. What does he unlock for you offensively, given how much different he is as a player than, you, than what Mason was? Spacing. And, you know, no disrespect to Mason, to, uh, there's different players. Uh, Kelly spaces the floor. He's an excellent passer. Uh, he, he's a great three-point shooter. He can, you know, bring it down in transition. He can shoot the trail three. Uh, so it's a lot of different avenues he opens up. And defensively, he's a smart player. He's a charge taker, verticality. So, uh, but he really opens up the floor offensively for us and really gives us space. Is that especially important when given you talked yesterday about how Aiden Killinger, two guys 20 years old, will have the ball in their hands a lot. Can he help relieve them of that burden? He will, and he can do that. Uh, you know, Jeremy can do that as a second trail. Also, Isaiah can do it as a second trail, but really Kelly, could, because again, he, he's a threat at the five. If he's playing the five out there at the top, he's really a, a shooting threat. So, really, that big guy, you know, they can stay back in the paint if they want to, and that, that really helps everybody. And then, like you said, if there's pressure coming down the floor, you always have an outlet. You always have an outlet at the top of the court, uh, top of the floor. Uh, the day. With Killian, where is he at just as far as his you know, comfort level? Of course, he missed most of last season uh, with the, the injuries. He's still kind of in between as far as in a sense being uh, rookie in some ways, but still also a sophomore having that year under his belt. No, I, and I was just talking to Troy today. Killian and uh, Sadiq and Isaiah are you would know that they're just second year players right now because of the speed, pace, and that just didn't start today. That's been going on in September. Uh, and, and it's not the shoot, it's not the scoring. You're not going to see a lot of stuff Killian's doing now in the scoreboard, okay? pushing the pace defensively. He's one of our best pick and roll defenders with his big body. So, but what I like now is the speed he's playing at. He's, he's playing at an NBA high level speed where last year was, you know, no disrespect to Europe, he was playing at a more of a European speed. And so now he's gotten used to the NBA speed level. <clears throat> to go back to Kelly really quick, obviously he provides uh, floor spacing, but there's also Mason provided like vertical spacing. And so there is a little bit of a trade off there. Um, Isaiah can do it, but you guys don't have a lot of lob threats. What is the trade off in floor spacing versus vertical spacing for you guys? The three ball. <laughs> yeah. The three ball. That, that's that's the major Difference and, and again, I love the, the verticality and the vertical spacing that that uh, Plumley bought brought. But again, the threat of the three, uh, it, it's going to keep a, it's going to really help our scoring. I thought our defense was was decent as the year went on last year. We just had issues of, of scoring the ball, and he's going to help that a lot of that spacing as well. Being able to knock down the three. Well, you put together a starting five. I'm not trying to give you the wall or anything, but. How much does experience factor in where you don't want to have all of this first and second year guys out there and then Jerry, you know, being the one lone veteran out there? Does that factor in or do you just go best five that plays together? How, how much does experience factor in? Experience does, the, the, it does factor in experience. Uh, I am, I'm saying that our, some of the, like Sadiq, I don't look at him as a second year guy. I don't look at really Killian as a second year guy, even though he's probably closer to a second year guy than Sadiq. Isaiah is and Sadiq really has taken a full step forward, so not really a second. So, you know, you like to have experience out there, but I trust those guys tremendously as far as their. And then Jeremy is, is you know, he's an experienced guy. So, um, you like to have it, but it's not the end, you know, the end of the starting unit. But we're going to have to do 
you know, our second unit is going to have to be uh, solid. Uh, so and we're going to have to do it by numbers, I, I, I think. So, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's uh, the first unit is, I like the first unit, you know, once we, we get to it. In terms of our goal, we saw how much uh, last year's coaching staff helped us track our development. I was curious, what went into the decision to kind of turn over the coaching staff this year? Well, one, you know, I, we to bring in more teachers, no district. I love the guys that left, Micah and Sid and, and Sean. But as far as teaching, being, you know, guys that also had been with me before and been on the court, being able to get on the court and teach and sweat with the guys, that's huge right now with this young group. And, uh, you know, you have Billy Baino out there hitting, playing defense, you know, using the pads, Jim Moran. So all those things are, are huge. Jerome playing one on one with the guys, and uh, just a, a different different vibe. And and again, when those guys came here, it was more X and O schemes, uh, game preparation. Where now it's a totally different mission. Where it's teaching uh, classrooms and working guys one on one at night. So it's just so much more than. Uh, that group brought to the table. And again, they brought some tremendous X and O's and schemes to the table uh, that, you know, when we were competing for a playoff position, but uh, the, the mission has changed. And in terms of how, I guess, the roles will be broken down, you know, how do you, I guess, list it out what each person's duties will be as far as developing? With our, with our, with our, the new staff? Mm -hmm. Well, with uh, Rex Flamin, he's going to be the defensive guy. Uh, Rex was with me, with me in Minnesota and in Toronto. So uh, he knows exactly what we're doing defense, <laughs> defensively. Uh, Jim Moran, he's going to be more on the offensive side with Jerome Allen. Uh, they'll, they'll both be with the, with the offensive side. Uh, and, and Baino will be also on the defensive side. So, and, but most of all, those guys are developing. They, they, they have the roster divided up. Uh, whether it's early in the morning, late at night, they, they're going to be in the gym working with the guys. So, uh, but, but again, each each coach brings something different. But most of all, the energy, the ability to get on the floor and, and uh, sweat with the players is going to be, be really important. And then Coach B, Coach B, uh, John has done an excellent job with the fundamentals. We have a portion of practice just strictly committed to fundamentals. The first five, ten minutes of practice. 27th last year, turnovers is huge. So even with a young team, just going back to the basics for our young guys is, is so important. So we have a, a coaching staff full of teachers and uh, that's, what we, that's what we are right now. Ben Wallace was giving some pointers to Isaiah Stewart out there and you know, lots of said about the similarities in their game to just how it, what has it been like to have them around and be able to give them huge. Advice. Huge. So, I mean, just showing him tricks of the trade in the post defense. Uh, ben is going to be with us uh, this week in training camp, working with our big guys in the post defense and, and showing him tricks of the trade there. And just to have Ben around and, and have him as an example for Isaiah and Luca and, and Kelly is so important just because of his experience of what he's done and what he means to this franchise. So. For him to be a part of our organization right now, and he's going to work with the guys. He's going to do some scouting. Uh, really, really excited about having Ben as a part of our, our, our organization. And Jawan Howard is also here as well. Is he just kind of popping yeah. through? Or? Yeah, we had dinner last what last week, I guess it was two weeks ago, over in Ann Arbor. Just you know, a bunch of athletic directors and coaches from around Michigan, and so he was there. So I invited him over. Uh, so, which was great. You know, we want to have that relationship with everybody. I've, I've invited Coach Izzo, and he's all, he knows he's welcome, and he said he's coming down, but, you know, now's a busy time. So, uh, but uh, we love to have those relationships, and I've known Juwan for a long time. Bank, Coach Baino coached Juwan in Portland, so a lot of relationships. And I also, too, I think Juwan coached Rodney Magruder in Miami. Isaiah literally, so we got a lot of connections here uh, with the organization. Last season, you talked about a lot of possibility of using safety as a small ball center. Mm -hmm. Is Trey Lyles a candidate to maybe do some of that this year? Uh, yes, yes, he is. You know, it, it will be 
something we if we go to a small lineup three we could do that. Uh, and that's another guy that's really been impressive among September. The way he knows how to play, uh, shoot the ball, <laughs> and stretch the floor. I think he's really, really a big uh, piece that you know for our team. Heading into uh, training camp now, is there the continuity of stuff? Because guys have been working in September, mm -hmm. you don't have to start from kind of square one. But what did you start with today to kind of get you into game mode? Well, we're in, weeks? we're in the defensive mode right now. And we still just really, really, you know, because the month of September is a lot of individual stuff offensively. You know, you never see guys go out and start working on slide drills, individual workouts. So, uh, but mainly uh, getting our defensive mindset in Rod, and so that's really really important for us in these next two days is going to be we have two days tomorrow and so it's really going to be uh, you know focused on defense and uh, so but I, I like I loved our energy today I thought you know it, 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 it just everybody was locked in focused you could see the continuity from last year to this year you know you're not teaching things from scratch so uh, that was really good to see it uh, at the end of last season, uh, Troy, I think the word you phrased it was if you're going to have a Pistons uniform on, you're going to work this summer. Can you just kind of big picture view how the how the summer went and what you felt was accomplished? Well, Keith, I've always been, you know, going back to Toronto. When you're starting a new program, you know, there's no days off, and if you're not committed to to work with each and every day as a young team. Having that program for each individual player, having a coach with that player the entire summer, uh, you're going to be behind because there's just so much to, to learn and, and so many things guys have to work on. And now you throw in that our G League situation. We have a lot of G League players that are going, you know, that have been working with us, you know, throughout the summer and individual workouts. So um, it, it's just a must that you have to have the month of July. The month, the month of June, July, August, and this year was a little different because of the timing of the season. But uh, our guys have worked the entire summer, uh, you know, back and forth here with individual workouts for wherever their hometown is. We send coaches there to be with them uh, in their hometown. So it's been a, a, a really, really good summer uh, for our guys. And you know, the young guys coming on board. Uh, Lucas has stayed in great shape, kept his weight down. Kate has gone from 206 to 218 with his weight. So they've committed to the weight room. They've committed to working. And again, if you're going to be a Detroit Pistons, it's going to be about work. And, uh, and there's no choice. There's no choice if you want to be a good player. Either you do the work or you don't. And uh, you're going to suffer the consequences if you don't. So, uh, and, and we have a great group of young men that have bought into that. And uh, I think the fruits are going to show I don't know exactly when, but they're going to show at some point, and I, I've seen steps right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay.